Good morning and welcome to today's Desco Europe webinar on ESD Garmin. My name is Tim Hacker and I'm the Regional Sales, uh, sales Manager for Desco Europe. Joining me on this webinar is Stephen Burns, the Desco Europe Brand Manager. Good morning, Stephen. Morning, Tim. Good morning, everybody. Uh, so I'll be uh, helping out today by answering uh, your questions, which we do hope you will submit. It will look like um, one of the images you can see on the screen there. And if you've joined previous webinars, you'll know that uh, uh, we pause at the end to answer uh, a couple of the questions that you submit. Um, if we, do, we we aim to keep the webinars uh, within a reasonable time, so we don't uh, normally get a chance to answer all of the questions, but any questions that you submit, we'll definitely answer by email, and we'll pick out a few that are likely to have um, the broadest application and answer them during the webinar. So we'd love for you to uh, submit your questions that way. Um, also, again, if you've joined webinars before, you'll know that we sometimes ask you some questions uh, just to get some feedback and some understanding um, of, in this case, the understanding of uh, current usage of uh, ESD garments and ESD smocks, um, particularly over garments, so uh, ESD garments that you're wearing over normal uh, regular clothes. So if you would please take 10 seconds to just select yes or no, uh, to that question that's on the screen there. That would be fantastic. And then uh, we can move forward with the presentation this morning. That's brilliant. Thanks very much to everybody who participated. Uh, I'll hand back to Tim. Uh, thanks, Stephen. So during today's webinar, uh, we will look at the purpose of ESD smocks, different types of smocks, uh, testing requirements, and troubleshooting as well. So what is the purpose of an ESD smock? And a smock should act as a Faraday cage for clothing. Uh, this is because using a wrist strap uh, does not ground operators' clothing as uh, personal clothing is uh, personal clothing is usually insulative. So I'd like to draw your attention to the images on the bottom right of your screen. Now the smock has to cover all of the clothing. Uh, as the sleeve of the clothing is on show on the image on the right, the smock is not providing any protection against that sleeve. Um, so as an operator moves around, um, even even on their workbench, they'll be generating a charge, and this can lead to a charge device uh, device model event. Uh, while working on ESD sensitive devices. And on your screen now are uh, other purposes for ESD smocks outside of the ESD control uh, considerations. Now there's a, a wide selection of smocks available and there's a, a lot of information on this slide and we will provide a copy of the PowerPoint presentation after the webinar, but there are a lot of features uh, that would need to be considered such as uh, sleeve pockets, as you can see from the image down here at the bottom of the screen. Um, the customer can also, uh, would also need to uh, decide what type of ESD garment is best suited to their application. Which leads us on to the, the user guide, which defines three types of ESD garments, and they are the static control garment that acts as a Faraday cage, uh, the groundable static control garment, and the groundable static control garment system. And this is called a system because uh, this involves the operator, the garment, uh, and grounding cord. And, and we will look at this in uh, a further detail a little later on. Now you can say uh, table three, which is taken from the European standards, and here you can find the product qualification test uh, to be carried out before the ESD smocks are purchased and the compliance qualification test, which would need to be uh, carried out periodically uh, on the static control garment. Um, now, the standard requires that a panel-to-panel -panel test is carried out, um, and we will show you how uh, to carry out this test uh, a little later on during the webinar. And this is table two, which again is also taken from the uh, European standard, and this is a uh, for the, the groundable static control garment system. And this can be tested the same way as the wrist strap is tested uh, and uses the same equipment. Um, and this is, uh, uh, the testing is the same, uh, but, but the test limit is also uh, 3.5 times 10, 7, 9, 
or 35 megaohms, as you can see there in the uh, compliance verification part. Um, and we recently carried out a webinar on uh, measuring resistance in an ESD protected area, where we performed a demo on the digital surface resistance meter kit. And this was showcasing the different tests that could be carried out. And we'll, um, as I said earlier, there, there are three categories of ESD uh, garments. There's a static control garment, which acts as a Faraday cage. Uh, the groundable static control garment, which the operator will be required to use the wrist strap uh, and or footwear to ensure the operator is grounded. And as you can see from the operator on the left-hand side of your screen, um, she's wearing a, a wrist strap. Now, the third one is the groundable static control garment, uh, and this has a snap at the hip. Uh, that uh, a coil cord connects to, uh, and the cuffs on the smock act as a uh, wrist strap, and these will ground the operator. And this means that their hands are free, as there isn't a coil cord attached to uh, a wrist strap on their wrist. And in the uh, middle image there, you can see that the operator is connected to a continuous monitor. So the same continuous monitors that are used for wrist straps uh, can also be used uh, for the smocks. And we'll now move on to the testing of the ESC garments and all ESC garments uh, should have a panel to panel test. And as you can see in the image uh, here, it's taken from the ANSI S 2020 standard. Uh, the test that should be carried out uh, should be uh, panel to panel. So one 2.5 kilogram probe on the one sleeve and the other 2.5 kilogram probe on the other sleeve. Um, and then an additional test for the ground static control garment system is required. Uh, which is the same as the wrist strap. You can see uh, the image there on the bottom left holding an electrode, and then you have the, uh, the touch test as well. So there are uh, troubleshooting tests that can be carried out. Uh, these are uh, sleeve to sleeve tests, so as you can see in the image there, so the probes are on the sleeve. And a panel to panel test, and this uh, tests the quality of the connection for the stitching there between, as you can see there, it's the uh, right breast of the smock and uh, the right sleeve. And we, we spoke earlier about uh, the considerations, and there are a number of options uh, for smocks. So the more conductive the material, uh, it, it is better. And there are different styles of smock, so different colours. Uh, you can have open cuffs uh, or closed cuffs, um, and uh, the length of the smock. So you can either have a jacket or the uh, longer lab coat is also available. And the smocks can be washed at home, so the operators can wash their smocks themselves. Uh, it's washed in the same way as standard clothing. And the recommendations for cleaning and washing of the smocks can be found on the technical bulletin uh, for the item on the Disco Europe website. Now, there's a, a lot of customers who like customization of smocks, uh, such as company logo, um, and this can be achieved with uh, embroidery, uh, sublimation, or, or patches on the smock. And if you would like to uh, sample any of our smocks, uh, you, uh, please request a sample uh, on, on the Desco Europe website. Uh, as you can see there, that's the screenshot taken from the website and the request a sample box is on the right hand side of the screen. Stephen, do we have any questions? Thanks, Tim, for taking us through the presentation and thank you everybody for the questions you've submitted. We've got uh, a few questions here. I, th I think we'll answer uh, just just three of them today. Uh, as I mentioned before, any that we don't answer right now, we will follow up with you um, uh, afterwards. And Tim's going to mention in a minute uh, if you have any questions that occur to you after the webinar, how you can ask those as well. Um, just while we get into the questions, uh, I have a second uh, poll question to ask, which will come up on the screen in just a second for you there. So the question is, uh, following the webinar, would you like to organize a demo of our ESD smocks together with uh, either touch testing or continuous monitoring or both to show you how that works? Um, so if you would just complete that poll and we'll uh, get on with some questions while that's going on. So um, uh, first question here, do you have a dual wire smock? Uh, 
it isn't included in the presentation, but actually we have just completed development of a dual wire smock. So in the same way that Tim described um, that our smocks can be uh, tested and monitored with standard uh, testers and uh, continuous monitors, the dual wire smock similarly uh, is now available uh, and can be uh, tested with, if you're currently using dual wire uh, uh, cords, they're compatible with those standard cords uh, or likely to be we can double check that and will certainly be testable with your uh, current testers and monitored by your current monitors uh, this is an interesting question wouldn't it be better simply to issue an ESD safe uniform for example polo shirts um, and I think we would say, yeah, that's certainly an option uh, if you know that your operators are wearing uh, ESD safe uh, clothing, then there wouldn't be the need for an additional uh, uh, static control garment such as we've described today. I suppose uh, the con one of the considerations there is not, not necessarily an ESD consideration, more like um, uh, let's say a, a financial consideration if you were to do that you would need to issue uh, multiple uh, uh, sweatshirts or polo shirts or, or whatever you're using uh, to each uh, operator uh, so that they can have a fresh one uh, each day uh, whereas with a smock of course because it's an overgarment uh, you would get multiple days of usage out of it in in, in most uh, instances before it would need to be laundered so perhaps there's it's not an ESD consideration the answer to the question is uh, yeah it's perfectly possible to issue uh, ESD safe clothing uh, rather than over garments um, it does strike me as a more expensive option um, and they certainly wouldn't have or as far as I'm aware I don't know of any polo shirts or ESD sweatshirts that have uh, the option to ground the operator and to act as the wrist strap so they would not offer that functionality uh, either uh, a final question uh, before we uh, wrap up this morning's webinar uh, why why is it that Desco Europe offers different lengths of smock so we uh, Tim uh, just on a very recent slide there showed the uh, the jacket length and the lab coat which is longer um, and just remember that the the purpose is to uh, protect the device on the workbench uh, from any charge that's on the clothing that means that this the over garments that we use must come below the level of the workbench um, Therefore, on seated operations, the standard uh, jacket length of, of smock is perfectly sufficient for that. It will come below the level of the workbench. However, with the, a standing operation, you're going to, going to need a longer garment uh, to make sure that the garment drops below uh, the level of the workbench. So that's the reason for the uh, two options there. Uh, other than that, they are they are functionally the same. So uh, thank you very much for those questions. Uh, the other questions we haven't answered today, we'll get back to you on email. Uh, thank you for uh, responding to the poll as well. Uh, and I'm going to hand back to Tim. Yeah, thanks, Stephen. So uh, on, on your screen now uh, uh, is my contact information, like Stephen just said. So if there are any other further questions that you think of after this webinar, uh, please don't hesitate to contact us and we'll happily answer any questions you may have. Um, we've also provided uh, some more resources there. So there's the link to the IEC website, which um, has uh, where you can purchase the European standard. And there's also the link to the Jessica Europe website where you can have a look at the, the wide range that, that we also offer. Um, so the, there will not be a webinar next week. Uh, we will be back in a couple of weeks' time uh, with a webinar on the Combo Tester X3 uh, and the Smart Lock Pro, and we hope that, that you can join us uh, for that one. But thank you for your time today, uh, and uh, have a good weekend.